morning everybody uh, good to be with you today uh, on this the whew, ninth day of May ninth May ninth May ninth time goes by doesn't it um, yes indeed um, but good to be with you guys this morning as we gather together for worship um, hope we got a few joining us today I'm sure we will. Uh, morning, Lou. Morning, Bertie. Morning, Deanne. Shalom, shalom, shalom to you. Uh, we got a few others. Uh, morning, Tom and Michelle and Joe. Shalom, shalom. Uh, super shalom uh, to you today. Uh, morning, Sue. Uh, Nice, the sun is shining today. I think we're all enjoying that, that's for sure. Uh, grateful for for that uh, today. Well, I uh, hope you had a nice weekend. Uh, Sunday was really, really fantastic with the confirmation. Um, and uh, just a beautiful day. Yesterday, not so great. Uh, but, you know, you gotta, you gotta have those days as well, for sure, for sure. Uh, but the sun is shining today, so we're grateful for that. Um, and grateful to have you guys here uh, this morning. Well, let's, uh, how about we get, oh, and say hello to our face, or our YouTube friends as well, that they're with us today. Uh, so, um, you know, it was a big weekend in many, many ways. Uh, you, maybe you heard there was something going on over in, in, in England, right? Um uh, you know, I guess it was a big deal. Uh, maybe you're you're into that uh, kind of royal watching. I think they call it. Now, there's a lot to watch there, uh, no doubt about it. Uh, but it was the coronation of King Charles the Third, King Charles the um, Third, and uh, you know you had the formal coronation service with all the pomp and circumstance. Uh, um, you had uh, more of the uh, well, it was still official. I watched part of that concert, uh, the coronation concert on Sunday afternoon. Uh, but obviously, uh, it was the ushering in of an earthly kingdom. Uh, and here's the thing maybe you've come to discover about earthly kingdoms. They come and they, they go, um, don't they? Uh, earthly kingdoms, they come and, and go. Uh, I know this English... Uh, you know, royalty, uh, English line of succession has gone on for, uh, for a long time. Uh, but earthly kingdoms, uh, they, they come and go. And uh, one of the things that, that Jesus did, in fact, the first thing that, that Jesus did, his first sermon was really ushering in God's kingdom. Now, you've got to understand God's kingdom is different than an earthly kingdom. In fact, in fact Jesus said in Mark, uh, he, he said, repent and believe the good news. Uh, the kingdom of God is at hand. The kingdom of God is breaking in. Now, when we think of kingdom, we often think of King Charles and Diana and all that stuff over in England, but uh, earthly kingdoms. But Jesus came, uh, he came when we talk about an earthly kingdom, or when we talk about a heavenly kingdom, it is the, the rule and the reign of, of God in our midst. And so when we pray the Lord's Prayer, we say, Thy kingdom come, Lord. We're asking God's kingdom to come uh, among us. And Jesus says that this is good news. This is what we've been waiting for. I mean, that was what his announcement was when he came. Repent and believe the good news. The kingdom of God is at hand. The kingdom of ha the kingdom of God is is breaking in, and uh, the time has come. <laughs> he says it's it's happening, it's happening now. Now here's the thing: the kingdom of God doesn't look like earthly kingdoms. In fact, Jesus is often downplaying what the kingdom of God is, the rule and reign of God. He he compares it what to a mustard seed. Uh, he compares it to wheat and weeds, uh, and, and, and it's, it's, it's something that, that's almost 
hidden. It's, it, it's something that um, we can't see. And yet what's so amazing about it is that God invites each and every one of us to be a part of it. I love the verses uh, for today uh, when, when we hear about the kingdom of God. Uh, so here's what Daniel says in Daniel chapter 2, verse 44. He says, the God of heaven will set up a kingdom that shall never be destroyed. Okay, Daniel was an Old Testament prophet. He said the day is coming when God will set up a kingdom, the kingdom of God or the kingdom of heaven, uh, that shall never be destroyed. All right, earthly kingdoms come and go. Uh, the reign of the whatever dynasty it is in England, whatever that Tudor, no, I, I don't know what, what household it is. It's going to come to an end. Daniel says, the God of heaven will set up the kingdom that shall never be destroyed. And when Jesus comes, what does he say? The time has come. Repent and believe the good news. The kingdom of God is at hand. That's, God is breaking in. God is here. God's kingdom has been established. And we are a part of it. Listen to this one from Luke chapter 22. It says, Jesus said to the apostles, I confer on you. Just as my Father has conferred on me a kingdom, so that you may eat and drink at my table in my kingdom. Jesus offers us a place, a place at the table in his kingdom. I guarantee you, not many people got a place at King Charles's table, right? But you and I, each and every one of us, no matter who we are or where we come from, we have been invited. We have been given a place at the king's table. And to, to, to show us that, to prove that, God gives us his spirit. His spirit living in us. His spirit living in, in us. All right? So that's the assurance. That's the promise that we have a place at the kingdom table of God. That we have a place in this kingdom. And as a result of that, uh, as Paul says here in our reading for 1 Corinthians, that we have been given gifts. As the spirit dwells in us, we have been made a part of this kingdom and we have something to contribute each and every one of us we are to use our gifts to the glory of god to the glory of god to the glory of god's kingdom so that others may know that they have a place at the table just listen to these words this is from first corinthians chapter 12 1 through 11. 1 Corinthians 12, 1 through 11. What I want to talk to you about now is the various ways God's Spirit gets worked into our lives. This is complex and often misunderstood, but I want you to be informed and knowledgeable. Remember how you were when you did not know God, led from one phony God to another, never knowing what you were doing, just doing it because everyone else did it. It's different in this life. God wants us to use our intelligence to seek understanding as well as we can. For instance, by using your heads, you know perfectly well that the Spirit of God would never prompt anyone to say, Jesus be damned. Nor would anyone be inclined to say Jesus is master without insight from the Holy Spirit. God's various gifts are handed out everywhere, but they all originate in God's Spirit. God's various ministries are carried out everywhere, but they all originate in God's Spirit. God's various expressions of power are in action everywhere, but God himself is behind it all. Each person is given something to do that shows who God is. Everyone gets in on it. So what is Paul saying here? He's saying everybody's got a place at the table, right? Everyone gets in on it. Everyone benefits. All kinds of things are handed out by the Spirit to all kinds of people. 
the variety is wonderful. Listen to the variety. Wise counsel, clear understanding, simple trust, healing the sick, miraculous acts, proclamation, distinguishing between spirits, tongues, interpretation of tongues. All these gifts have common origin, but are handed out one by one by the one Spirit of God. He decides who gets what and when. So the good news is, is God's kingdom is among us. It doesn't look like much. It doesn't look like riding around in gold chariot carts and carriages and pomp and circumstance and power and might. Uh, God's kingdom ushers in peace and love and justice. That's what God's kingdom ushers in, and he calls us to be a part of it. We all have a place at the table. And God, as he gives us his spirit, seeks to work through us. And we have been given that, that spirit. It's common sense. We can't say Jesus is our Lord without the Spirit of God living in us. right? And if the Spirit's living in us, we can't condemn Jesus. But when the Spirit of God lives in us, it changes us. And he gives us gifts to use for the good of the kingdom. All are involved. All of us have a place at the table. I think my favorite line is, remember how you were when you didn't know God, led from one phony God to another, never knowing what you were doing, just doing it because everyone else did it. It's different in this life. You see, it's different in this life. We don't follow after the ways and the thinking of this world. In fact, Listen to this. This is a, a tweet I found this morning. It says, um, Jesus didn't call you to be your authentic self. He called you to deny yourself. How many times have we heard that? that that's pretty sneaky, right? Pretty sneaky on Satan's part. Oh, you need to be your authentic self, your true self. And it sounds good, doesn't it? You've got to do what you need to do to find your authentic self. And yet, what did Jesus say? He said, deny yourself, take up your cross, and follow me. If anyone wants to save his life, he will lose it. But whoever loses his life for me and for the gospel will save it. Deny yourself, and you will find real life. But what does our world say? Oh, no, you need to find your authentic self. My authentic self ain't all that great. <laughs> I don't need to find it. I already know where it is and what it's done. So I need to deny this self, and I need to take up my cross, and I need to follow Jesus today. That's common sense. That's spirit thinking. But it is so easy for us to be influenced by the ways and the thinking of this world. I don't need to find my authentic self. <laughs> it found me and I, I don't want what it has to give. Uh, but I want what Jesus has. I want to take up that invitation to be at his table and filled with his spirit. Jesus living in me. I really want to live. I want to share that with with others. And so that's really what 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 the privilege we have. God has given us gifts. we got to discover what they are and we got to put them into use for God's glory and for the good of his kingdom. The time has come. The kingdom of God is at hand. Repent and believe this good news. That's good news. God's kingdom's here among us. It, it doesn't look like it always. i got to say that. But it, it it's here. Jesus ushered it in, and through his death and resurrection, we've been made a part of the family. Sins are forgiven. We are a new people uh, in him. Well, we got some prayers today. Uh, pray for a friend of Amy Kopaki, uh, Mark B. He was in a motorcycle accident. Uh, sounded like he's busted up pretty good, so we pray for, for him. 
Uh, we pray for Dale. Dale has the opportunity to go to his uh, appointment this afternoon. Um, the one that was supposed to be last Friday was canceled. Uh, so he'll find out today. Continue our prayers for Joyce. Pray for uh, Buzz Dooley's mom dealing with uh, um, a whole bunch of health issues. Pray for Art, friend of Joe and Cindy's, who has got colon cancer, starting radiation treatments today. Uh, that's not great. All those people who are fighting and battling cancer. Uh, pray for the young ones among us. Uh, for uh, for baby. Baby Arlo, Mia, Maya, um, will be baptized this weekend. We're excited about that. Uh, brought into God's kingdom, God's promises, right? Made into the, brought into the family. Uh, that's exciting. Um, uh, we also uh, pray for um, those who are pregnant and that God would watch over their pregnancies. Uh, so let me pray. Jesus, you are a bread of life. Thank you for promising to feed us and care for us always. You know our hunger and thirst for food, for water, and most importantly, your presence in our hearts and lives. Lord, thanks for the invitation to a spot at your table. Uh, we celebrate again and rejoice in the fact that, that your kingdom has come. It's among us. Uh, and that's the good news, Lord. That is the good news. Uh, that amidst, amidst the, the brokenness and the uncertainty and the lies of this world, your kingdom has come among us. And uh, we can repent and uh, receive and hear again that good news again again today. Uh, we thank you, Lord, for your place, for our place at your table, for your spirit dwelling in us, that we can live as new and different people. Bless us in that, Lord. Um, help us, Lord, to, uh, to take up our cross and follow you, to deny ourselves, because that's when we really live. That's when we find our true and authentic self, because we can't find it on our own. Uh, so, Lord, uh, fill us with your spirit. Help us to use our gifts to your glory. Uh, today we pray for Mark, who is involved in a motorcycle ac accident, for Dale and for Joyce. Uh, pray for Buzz's mom. Uh, we pray for our church, Lord. Um, as people come and go, um, it seems more and more difficult to have people come. So we just we pray, Lord, that you would use us. Uh, to go out, workers, into the harvest field, um, to, to share this, this good news that the kingdom has come. And even though it doesn't look like it, it doesn't match up with the kingdoms of this world, uh, Lord, your kingdom is, is here in Jesus, and uh, we are a part of it, and so can everybody else. Thank you for our fellowship here, our family here at Bethel. Uh, Lord, it is a family. Uh, we know that. Fam no, no families are perfect, uh, but we just ask that you would work in us and through us to have an impact on people's lives. Uh, we ask that you go before us today and behind us, Lord. Uh, uh, we thank you for this day. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, good to be with you all today. Um, looking forward to, yeah, exciting this, this weekend for Joe and Cindy, baby Maya. Uh, we'll be baptized, brought into the family of God. Uh, built. Uh, the promise, that invitation, that's a gift, uh, the gift for all of us. And we, we, we're so grateful that we can confess and confirm that faith again today. Say yes to the God who said yes to us. All right, uh, you guys take care. Enjoy the day. Talk to you soon. Bye-bye.